when it's serious, it's serious. Okay, when it is serious, it is serious. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, it is another video. We here, we are gonna do the things. And this is a let's keep it real kind of video, okay? This is a serious video. This is a video that I've been requested to do ever since I think November, December. And I'm only now getting into doing these kinds of videos because I know they tend to be a little bit personal and suited to the particular individual. But I kind of feel like videos like this are necessary these are necessary conversations to have especially when we you know being young people and you know making our way in the world i think it's very necessary to have these kinds of conversations and as you can already see in the title down below you know what this video is about i've been asked multiple times to do this video i'm doing it now and if you want to get serious get a pen get a paper get a book get a get a get a get a get a glass of a glass or something and let's get down to the business are you ready this is the video on saving tips what to save and how to save and how to do it correctly okay if you want to see this video then let's get started so you've probably definitely seen something either on my blog or on youtube i don't know if it was the btsa days or whatever but you've probably seen something on my channel about learning how to save and saving tips the only difference with this video is this one is going to be a little bit more in depth this one is going to be a little bit more precise i'm going to try and articulate myself as much as i can with this video because i think it is very very imperative that we take things like this extremely seriously so yes if you are a beginner and you are beginning to save or if you have been saving but you're not saving as much as you would like to or anything of that nature then this is a video for you to watch i really hope this video is helpful for you i hope that um it helps you to start thinking about money and to think about saving differently as opposed to, you know, the way you've been thinking about it before. So we're going to start and this is five tips on how to start saving money if you are a beginner. So let's get into it. The first thing, first things first, first things first. Okay, first things first is create a budget. Now this is no joke. I think you've probably heard this a million and one times before, create a budget. Now, this is not only limited to working people only. You can be a student and create a budget. Now when I mean creating a budget, I mean if you guys want to see a budget video where I actually draw out a budget and show you the um, ins and outs of how you can create a budget, let me know. But creating a budget basically means separating whatever income you have versus the expenses, seeing how much you need to spend that comes out of your income and how much you are left with. Because that amount, what you are left with there is what you are going to save. Not all of it. Obviously, there's other things, there's, there's going out, there's being around people, there's blah, blah, there's other things that will require money. But from that portion, from your income minus your expenses, from that portion, a little bit of it needs to go into saving. So first thing is first, create a budget. If you're somebody who works, you will know that budgets are very, very imperative, especially if you're your of the mindset of saving you need to have an income obviously pile and then you're going to have an expenses pile and you're going to subtract your expenses from your income and what you are left with is what you can play around with portion of that being what you save so um if you are a working class person obviously this is includes your salary if youtube is an extra that brings in a little bit of extra money sure with campaigns and whatever that's an income right um whatever incomes whether you've got five incomes that are coming in that is your income pile if you're a student things like your allowances that you get from your parents um the little stipends that you get as well if maybe you're a student at the same time you're interning somewhere else that stipend is an income so you consider things like that your allowance your stipend that you consider as an income and you're going to subtract it from your expenses expenses are different for each and every single person um working class you've got expenses like a car a house a, uh, a rent uh this also applies if you're a student as well you got rent you got um you know toiletries you got groceries you got 
everything so you normally what i do is i include every single thing that is an expense to me in my budget so what i am left with from my income minus expenses is what i can play around with in terms of saving so definitely definitely first thing is first is create a budget budgets are simple there are budgets that are very complicated there are budgets that are extremely simple it is up to you how you want to make your budget work for you so number two is whatever you realize that you're left with after deducting income minus expenses blah 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 that portion so if you are left with say a thousand rand from everything income minus expenses whatever if you're a student and you're left with a thousand rand what i would always suggest you take away from that to put into savings is 10 percent of what you are left with so if you're left with a thousand rand take away a hundred rand for savings don't touch it put it away i'll tell you how and where to put away later in the video but don't touch it put it away if you're left with four thousand rand 400 rand must go into savings if you can put away more than that even better but the standard threshold that I would definitely suggest that you put away for savings is definitely 10% of whatever is left. So if you're left with 10,000 Rand, 1,000 Rand, put it away. But if you feel like, nah, man, I can actually put down 3,000 and be left with 7,000 Rand to play around and, you know, drinks with friends and whatever, blah, 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 still be able to maintain your life the way you live your life perfect then put down three thousand the more you can save the better but the threshold the standard threshold that i would definitely advise is 10 percent of whatever you are left with don't dilly dally don't rethink don't negotiate it in your mind definitely make it a standard that this is what i'm going to put away so that's point number two 10 percent take 10 percent of whatever you are left with and make sure that this is what you're going to put away you're, gonna, you're not going to touch it. You're going to put it away. Then point number three is pay your bills first. Very, very important. Now, if you are a working class citizen, you know that bills normally come after you get paid, right? So if you get paid on the 25th, you can have your bills come out on the 26th, 27th. You can have them come out uh, on the 1st on the second whatever normally when bills need to get paid they normally use the dates of the 25th 26th 27th 1st 30th 31st whatever around that time you can negotiate with the uh person that you're paying whether you're paying it to the bank whether you're paying it to and a, a, a store that you have an account with whether you're paying you can negotiate with them as to when you want to pay them so what i definitely do suggest is that you pay your bills first before you can play around with whatever you're left with make sure that that's the first thing you do so if you feel like you've got a standard salary that comes in every single month on the 25th and you want your bills to come out as quick as possible definitely make them come out around the 26th 27th and make sure it is a debit order I stress so much that, you know, when I'm talking to my friends, when we're talking about saving and we're talking about things like that, I stress so much that make it a debit order. Don't make it something uh, that you would have to go into the bank or you would have to actively pay on your uh, banking app or whatever every single month. Just let it come out of your account. Then you don't have to worry about it anymore. So if it's DSTV, make it a debit order. If it's... Um, uh, Wi-Fi bill, if it's an MTN or a cell phone contract bill, whatever, make it a debit order. If you can make it a debit order, it's the best thing for you, okay? So I really suggest that you pay your bills first, then whatever it is that you are left with after that, that is where you can play. That is where you know that, okay, from this portion, then I take my 10%. But make sure that all your bills are paid, your car, your rent, your house, your, your bond, whatever everything that needs to be paid that is imperative that it gets paid you do not want to ruin your credit you do not want to ruin your name with the credit bureau and things like that you want to make sure that your bills are paid and they are paid on time so the best time to do the best way to do that is definitely debit orders so point number three pay your bills first extremely important pay your bills first pay them. four the most important point then put the money away so if you have just established what your 10 percent is if you've established that okay 10 percent i am making i am left with five thousand rand and i want to pay and i want to save ten percent of it 
put the money away now there is different ways in which you can do this you can go old school you can put the money away you can put the money away under the bed you can put the money away by giving it to someone else uh, to keep for you which i highly do not recommend i'll get into that just now why you can give it to your grandmother and ask her to hold it for you i don't recommend these systems or these methods because it's easy access to get the money so the three ways in which i feel there's one way which I feel is best to save the money in, in, in a way in which you cannot access it. One way, work with the bank. Everybody has a bank account, right? Everybody has a bank account. If you're a student, chances are you have a bank account, okay? If you're working class, you have a bank account, absolutely. So the only thing is talk to your bank. There are different types of accounts. This is where I want you to write this down and find out about these accounts. Read up on them. There are different types of accounts. The accounts that I absolutely love that are amazing for saving, amazing, amazing, are one, fixed accounts, two, notice pay accounts, and three, call accounts, or something that is also known as a pocket account. The reason why I say this, they're at the bank, once you put that money away, you can't touch it. But at the same time, you might want to have an account where you can access the money immediately if you need it if it is a sincere emergency and you are about to get listen you're about to get kicked out of your house because your rent was 500 rand short and you know you need 500 rand now with a notice pay account that's not going to work so with a call account or something that is like a pocket account that will work so if you're somebody who banks with fnb find out about pockets po Find out about pocket accounts. Pocket accounts are accounts in which you can, um, it's part of your account, it's part of your account number, but it's almost like a sleeve where you can throw in money, 500 rand, whatever, whatever, 300 rand, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can throw in money there, but you can access this access it as and when you need it so very very important because those kinds of accounts will come in handy especially when there is an emergency you can see it on your phone when you're doing your online banking you can see that it's there sharp if you need the money you can take it the only danger with this account is you will take that money more often than you should sometimes you'll take that money because you're going to lunch with a friend why you know so if you are for instance putting away a thousand rand if you can manage to put away a thousand rand i would highly suggest you split that figure so you split 500 and you put it into the call account to the pocket account and then you take the other 500 and you put it into a notice pay account now a notice pay account works very very differently notice pay accounts are accounts in which you can put money in and all of these accounts are interest bearing accounts so they accumulate not by much but they accumulate while the money is sitting in there so as I was saying that you can put 500 rand into the pocket account and then the other 500 you put it into a notice pay account. A notice pay account, the difference here is you have to notify the bank a month or maybe 21, maybe 31, maybe even 61 days before you need the money. So you cannot get hold of the money in a notice pay account without at least giving them a notice of 21, 31 or maybe even 61 days this is very very good especially if you're somebody who struggles with saving because you can't access that money immediately so you're going to need to find other means and other ways to access that money but that's a good thing because that money is still safe and it's still put away very very important um <clears throat> And the longer the notice period, if it's 61 days as opposed to 30 days, the higher the interest rate. Just make sure you read up about these, but these are really, really good. Fixed account is the other one which you would put in a certain sum of money, but you can't. You have to give a, a, a notice before. Uh, you can. You, sometimes you have to give a notice a month before. Sometimes you have to, uh, you know, anything from a month to about five years. So it really is... Um, up to you and what type of fixed account you go and get into look there's money market accounts there's a bunch of accounts that you can get um just have a look and and check it out at the bank and see um 
which one would be more suitable for you but if you are a student i highly recommend that you have something like a call account or a pocket account and something like a notice pay account you have both of those you can have them if you have an account with a bank they can open them for you free of charge so it really isn't any skin or money off of your nose all you need to do is just take the effort and actually do it so definitely invest in putting the money away but put it in proper accounts that you know that you'll be able to save and while you're at it get some extra ching with the interest right so definitely check those out fixed notice pay and pocket to call accounts research them check them out call your bank very very important and then the last one is manage your money don't flake test yourself but trust yourself at the same time and the only way that i would say manage your money the best thing that i can mention here is an app there's an app that i use on my phone it is called uh if my phone chooses to unlock it is called uh spending spending tracker and here you can put in your income you can put in your expenses and every time you make a purchase or a payment if you had woolies and you bought a really nice leopard print t-shirt or a leopard print shirt or whatever if you had whatever you can punch in that money because now it's coming out of your account you can put it it's a really really good way to track how much you have how much you've put away i just basically use it for income and expense tracking and seeing how much i have left with at the end of the day wow i feel like i've spoken but i feel like i spoke so fast i really hope this video was helpful definitely do get into saving with the way that things are times are really hard and times are really tough right now so saving is extremely important i hope this video was really really helpful for you guys this video is 20 minutes long so i'm definitely gonna go i hope it was helpful until the next one i'll see you very very soon until then sayonara bye and save save